Hello, welcome back. In this chapter, we're gonna focus on retirement planning. The things we're gonna go over include taking out all the myths and fears our saving for retirement. Um, we'll go through a step-by-step -step process and show you how you can determine how much money you need for your retirement. We'll explain different sources of retirement income and also help you develop a savings plan that is right for you so you can achieve your retirement goal. We will we'll help you integrate your savings plan into your current budget. Uh, and there may be some adjustment that you need to make to your budget in order to incorporate this long-term retirement goal. We'll also look into the legal aspect of estate planning, uh, which is part of um, retirement or post-retirement planning. Um, and then we also will touch upon will and trust. Uh, this is um, important as part of your overall financial plan. First, let's take a look at some common myths. The first one is when you start working, you don't have a whole lot of money. So the, it may be discouraging to think that what's the point of saving just a little? Uh, the thing to remember is that now that you have learned about finance is the power of compounding. The power of compounding is very important. A small saving early can help you save a lot later on. The other thing to remember, uh, another myth is that you'll spend a lot less money once you retire. Um, the truth is that you may have other expenses that you don't have when you before retirement, particularly when it comes to health care. People are living longer and longer nowadays. So if you are saving for just 15 years, that pretty much will not cover it for most of us because if you retire at age 65 or even 70, another 15 years will only take you to 80 or 85. And the life expectancy has gone up quite a bit in the meantime. Another myth is that you have plenty of time to save in the future. That is not true. If you don't develop the habit early it is very hard to change. So when it comes to retirement, saving is nothing like today, start today. A lot of people think that they're paying into social security and that should carry them through their retirement. And the truth is that most, for most of us, social security will not be sufficient. We're gonna go into details about how much social security you can expect. And in fact, you can check on that amount yourself every year. Uh, we talk about healthcare being one of the major expenses. Um, and a lot of people count on having Medicare at age 65 to start um, paying for their medical expenses. Uh, we'll cover Medicare and insurance in more details in a later chapter, but the short takeaway is that Medicare does not cover all your medical expenses. So you need to plan accordingly. So how can you get started? As we said earlier, start now. There's nothing like today. So if you start today, then you have plenty of time. Start small if you have to. Um, most companies will have um, 401k plan. Um, if you work in a uh, nonprofit or a school system, you'll have something called a 403b plan. They are similar. Uh, the best way to save is to use payroll deduction with your employer. That way you don't have to consciously make the decision every single time. Uh, another option is to use automatic transfer from your uh, bank account. So notice that the automatic is the keyword here. The more you can make this an automatic process, the easier it is for you to save for your retirement. Another important to keep in mind is to be realis realistic about investment return. Uh, your investment may go up or down in the short run. Um, the key is that retirement saving is for the long term. Long term here means 10, 20 years, or maybe even longer. Um, if you change your job, make sure that you 
take your retirement account with you. So you, there's something we will talk about that too is a concept called roll over. So rolling over means that you are transferring your retirement account money into either your new employer's plan or an IRA. That way you don't have to suffer tax consequences and you'll be less an uh, or penalty. One very important thing to keep in mind is that don't treat your investment saving as extra cash. So once you put it away into your retirement account, it's put away and forget it in some ways until you retire it. We talk about the importance of starting early. So what is the impact? So let's look at a simple example. Let's say your goal is to retire by age 65. For most of us nowadays, that's closer to 67 or 70 and you are saving $500 a month. And we assume that you can earn 9% on uh, per year on your investments. Uh, this is a relatively standard assumption, uh, the 9% um, that represents a uh, somewhat in the middle of the row uh, investment strategy. We'll talk about investing strategies, bonds and stock investments and mutual funds in, uh, in the next few chapters. Uh, for now, Let's assume 9%. Again, that is a long-term average. It's a relatively common assumption used by financial planners. Saving $500 a month, um, that may, be, uh, may or may not be achievable by you, but let's just start with that as an assumption. So if you start saving at age 25 at $500 per month, then uh, over until you retire at age 65, so that means you have 40 years to save for your retirement. And you have over $2 million. But if you wait just five years, so between years, so wait until you're age 30, so now you only have 35 years to save, your nest egg will have re decreased by a substantial amount. You only have a little bit like one and a half million dollars. Um, so as you can say, see, if you wait until age 40, for example, you still have 25 years left to save, but the amount goes down significantly. So the five, the five year difference makes a huge, huge difference. So starting early, even if you can only afford a hundred dollars, $200 per month is much better than not saving at all. Ne Hopefully you're convinced now that you need to, uh, saving early is tremendously advantageous. Next, you need to know, so how much do I need? Do I need a million dollars? Do I need $2 million? How much do I need to retire it? So let's take a look at, uh, how we can estimate the amount of expenses that you need once you retire it. So first of all, remember that your living expenses will change with your life stage. So life stages here refers to what is going on in your life. So once when you're retired, uh, you may become a grandparent, you may travel more, you may have more health care expenses. So using your current expenses um, may not be a uh, the best ex uh, the best forecast. So as I said, once you retire, you have more time. So chances are you'll spend more time on travel and exp uh, and entertainment. You start you likely spend less money on clothing, but definitely a lot less money on commuting. But you'll be spending more time or more money on travel. So that's a trade-off between travel and commuting. Uh, you may also uh, consider downsizing your house or even re relocating to a, an area that has a lower uh, standard of living because now you no longer have to live where your job is. Your income tax will probably also be lower, uh, particularly if your retirement income is less than your, um, your job income. The other uh, good news is that some retirement income may be taxed at a lower rate because they are long-term capital gain instead of in, uh, ordinary income. And if you put money in uh, accounts such as the Roth IRA, those, those income will not get taxed at all. One thing that's very important is to take into account inflation. So inflation, we would actually look at some uh, actual numbers to see how the impact of inflation on retirement. When you're in retirement, you definitely need to plan for emergency. This can be emergency for yourself or for your loved ones. 
Um, and how do you estimate your living expenses? You can talk to your older relatives or friends and they and look at how they live their life and they can share their experiences with you. Let's look at some national averages. The Bureau of Labor Statistics con um, conducts surveys on a regular basis on people's income, spending, uh, and also uh, in addition to employment data. So we think of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we always think of the unemployment data, but they actually also conduct survey on income and expenses. In 2021, their survey indicated that the average annual expenditure for people 65 or over was $52,141. So it's about $52,000. Out of that, 18,000 or about 36% was spent on housing. So housing is more than one third of the expenditure. And food was 64, 90, and healthcare was 7,000. So uh, next to housing, healthcare and food is the next highest expenditure. Interestingly, as you get older, your healthcare actually is, been more, uh, is a larger percentage of expenditure than food. So older people spend more money on healthcare than they do on food. Now let's take a look at a detailed example on how we will estimate our retirement needs. First, let's go over some basic assumptions. Uh, in this particular example, we're going to assume that your current age is 25 and your expected retirement age is 40, uh, 65. So you have 40 years to save for retirement. We assume that today's retirement expense is $55,000. That's about the national average. Next, we have to make some assumptions about inflation rate. The long-term average inflation rate in the U.S. is around 3%, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, we also have to make assumptions about how much you can earn on your investment, both before and after investment. We assume that before retirement, you're going to earn 9% per year. Again, this is a long-term average um, in the, uh, for a moderately uh, risky or conservative portfolio with some bonds and some stocks. Again, we'll explain all those terms in a later chapter, but this is, uh, this is rather typical for uh, a retirement account. Post-retirement, a, a very common assumption is that you're going to switch your investment into something a lot safer, uh, like a savings account or government bond or CD, which will earn lower interest rates. So we assume you earn 4% after retirement. So these are the assumptions that we make. Another assumption we need to make is the tax because uh, you have to pay tax um, pre-tax, so those are your pre-tax income, so we have to take into account tax. We assume 25%. Uh, this takes into account um, your lower income, so again, um, and also uh, some of your income may come in the form of long-term capital gain, which will give you a lower, lower tax rate. So given to, in order for us to have a $55,000 after-tax money to spend, we'll need to have pre-tax income of $73,333. The way we come up with this, with this estimate is we take the pre-tax dollar of $55,000 divided by one minus the tax rate. The tax rate is 25%. So is um, $55,000 divided by 0.75 that give us a pre-tax dollar amount of $73,333. We can also check that this amount will give us the income we need. So if you think about how this works, if we earn $73,333, we have to pay tax on it, right? And we pay 25%. So 25% is 0.25 times our income. So this is our income. And you end up with voila, $55,000. So we just checked that if we generated $73,333 in pre-tax income, they'll give us a after-tax uh, spending power of $55,000.
the good news is that we do not need to generate uh, seventy three thousand three three hundred thirty three dollars all through our investment because we can also get social security. We're gonna assume that you receive twenty five thousand dollars in social security. So if you subtract twenty five thousand dollars from seventy three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars, you come up with forty eight thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars. That's how much you need in terms of pre tax annual income um, that comes from your investments, including your 401k, your your IRA, your Roth IRA, and your personal saving. So this is how much you have to come from your own retirement saving. So that is net of social security. The good news about social security is that it's automatically indexed to inflation under the current law. So even if inflation goes up, our social security income will also go up. But that's not true for our own retirement income. So we have to adjust for that. So given that we need $48,333 today, how much would that be when we take into account a 3% inflation per year? So this is the amount we need today, today, but we won't retire for another 40 years, right? So we have to figure out if it's $48,333 today in today's dollar, adjusting for 3% inflation over 40 years, how much would that translate into? The good news is we actually have learned this um, in uh, our time value of money because this is a compounding problem. So basically what we're saying is that today we need $48,333, but this is gonna increase at 3%. So we multiply that by one plus 3% or one plus 0.03 over 40 years. So raise that to the power 40. And that will give us $157,665. So this is how much we need per year in pre-tax income when we turn age 65. So this is a step-by-step -step, uh, rough estimate of what our future retirement needs is. So now that we know how much we need for our spending per year, Let's take a look at how much money we need to save for our retirement to satisfy our needs. So remember, once again, we are assuming that you will spend $55,000 per year, which is the national average. And that our life expectancy plays a role here. How long are you, do you expect to live? So if we expect to live until age 80 and you retire at age 65, so that means you'll be retired in 15, you'll be, you'll spend 15 years in retirement. If that's the case, you need a total of $2.2 .2 million in order to support your annual spending. So once again, in today's dollar, we are talking about the average expenditure for, uh, an, uh, for a 65 year old. If you are lucky and you live much longer, let's say 90 years, uh, oh, so you'll be in, you'll spend 25 years in retirement and your retirement need will go up to three and a half million dollars. If you live an extra five years to 95, your retirement need will go up to four million dollars. So you may hear people nowadays talking about having a $1 million for retirement is not enough, you need $2 million. And that's actually not too far off the mark. If you want to have an average spending power of $55,000, uh, you and you expect a life expectancy to age 80, again, that is not uncommon at all nowadays. In fact, much more people are living a uh, much longer life and 85, to even 90 is the more common um, life expectancy. So you need between two to $3 million in that case. And what does that translate into? A $2 million nest egg will require a monthly saving of $473 a month. And that's assuming that you'll earn 9% per year. 
uh, if you want your nest egg to go up to three and a half million dollars, you need to save seven hundred and fifty two dollars per month. So this is uh, we can uh, again I can go for more in details how this is estimated. Um, but this is just a um, a framework of how you can look at retirement planning. Next, let's take a look at something called a 4% rule. So first, let's take a look at what the 4% rule is. The 4% rule is a very popular retirement planning rule. The rule of thumb is that you take you withdraw 4% of your retirement funds each year. So what that means is in order for the 4% rule to work, you need to save enough money such that when you take out 4% per year, it will be enough to support you. The 4% rule is a very simple rule and it's very easy to remember. However, it does not take into account inflation after your retirement years, nor does it take into account return that you earn your investment after you retire. But because the rule is so simple and easy to remember, we should take a look at how well does it work. We're going to use the same example, the numbers from our same example that we did before. Remember that when we went through the estimation, we figured that each year after taking into account inflation and excluding our social security benefit, we need $157,000 to support our uh, the lifestyle of a median American household. So the, remember, this is the $157,665 is the same amount that we determined in our last example. So how do we apply the 4% rule? It's actually very simple. To determine the amount that you need at retirement based on the 4% rule, you simply take the amount that you have computed, the $157,665 that you need each year, and divide that by 0 0.04, and you will come up with the amount that you need at retirement. So applying the 4% rule, meaning dividing that number by 0 0.04, you come up with $3.9 million. That's how much money you need following the 4% rule. Again, using the same assumptions that we have before, we assume we can earn 9% in our investment before we retired, and we will have 40 years before we will retire. Convert that to a monthly amount. Remember, we learned the payment function earlier when we talk about time value of money. So using the payment function, this translates into a monthly saving of $841.99. So those are the two important numbers. You need $3.9 million. And in order to reach the $3.9 million goal, you need to save $841. $2 per month. How does that compare to our, or our estimate earlier? Here, our estimate based on life expectancy. So we said that if we expect to live to 85, we will need 2.6 million. And to do that, we have to save $565 per month. If we live until 95, we will need $3.6 million at the time of retirement, and we need to save $775 per month. The 4% rule says that we need to have about $3.9 million in retirement, and we need to save $842 per month. So the 4% rule puts you at a life expectancy above 95 years and that is not surprising the reason it's not surprising is let's take a look at past studies uh, research and surveys about retirement most research on retirement withdrawal focuses on not running out of money and the four percent rule is one of the most popular so the idea is that if you save enough money such that taking out only 4% per year will be sufficient to support you, you will have a very low chance of running out of money before you, you die. So that explains why the 4% rule is more conservative in the sense that it actually suggests for you to save at a relatively high rate in order for you to have a secure retirement. So how well Americans prepare for that? 
Unfortunately, a survey finds that one in four Americans don't think that they can ever retire comfortably. This is a survey done by YouGov, and this is done in 2021. They show that in combining uh, all adult, 27% is not, they don't think that they can ever retire comfortably. Um, and if you look at it separated by different age group, you see that baby boomers, 23% of them think that they won't be ready. But when you look at Gen X, which is people born between 1965 and 1981, that percentage jumped to 37%. That is actually the highest age group. Millennials, which are, which are born between 1962 and 1989, 1982 and 1999, is 27%. And Gen Z, these are um, people who are born before... Uh, 2000 and later, uh, the percentage jump, uh, drops down to 16%. And that can be because they are quite young yet. So let's take a look at a more detailed breakdown. This is what this survey overall shows. Um, they ask, by what age do you think you will have saved ret uh, enough to retire comfortably? And not surprisingly, if you look at baby boomers, which are people born between 1946 and 1964, 39% of them are already retired. Um, in contrast um, to Gen X, um, in fact, we talk, we saw that earlier, 37% of them think that they will not, they'll ever, they don't think they'll ever be able to retire comfortably. Um, so these numbers are quite striking. And you also look at some, expectant, uh, some expectations. Uh, you notice that for people who are not retired, meaning Gen Z and younger, uh, the majority of them still hope to retire or plan to retire between age 60 and 65. Um, when, in fact, people don't start qualifying for Social Security until age 67 for full benefits. So the expectation is still to retire at age 65. Um, and if that is really the case and if that is your plan, you need to make sure that you have sufficient um, personal savings to supplement your retirement income before you start withdrawing from Social Security so that you can earn the full benefit at age 67. We will end the uh, video here. We're going to continue with the topics of retirement in our next video. See you soon.